I'm absolutely passionate about working in watercolour. I've written many books about my love for working in this medium and they have been published in Russian, Chinese, Spanish and Italian. It's one of those things, it's an area I've loved since I was a child, painting with colour. And let's face it, there are many, many colours on the market. And as artists, we all want to be different. Well, over the years, I've strived to find new ways of bringing my watercolours to life in my paintings so that I can make them look unique. And I'm really delighted to say that I've got a new collection of colours that I'd really love to share with you. Daniel Smith Shimmer Sets. Why Shimmer Sets? Have you noticed when you're walking around in life you might see dewdrops on flowers or sparkles on the surface of water? Even light hitting the back of the head of a subject. And with watercolour there are many ways to achieve that but with these fabulous products I can do that far more easily. And the effects are so subtle sometimes nobody really knows exactly how I've gained the effect. I'm talking about the Daniel Smith Shimmer Sets. In fact, the Jean Haynes shimmer sets, which I'm very excited to tell you about today. I'm now going to introduce you to my way of working with these fantastic products. Okay, so today I'm introducing my Daniel Smith shimmer sets. But before I show you the product, I'd like to show you these three paintings. Why did I want a shimmer set of watercolours? Well, I think these paintings are quite a good example. This is a painting I did of a peacock really love it as it is. I know under glass, if it was framed, you would get a really nice effect, but not as good as if I added just a tiny touch of an iridescent colour, somebody somewhere subtly, so I'll, I'll do that in a minute. This is a really pretty dragonfly sitting, hovering, I should say, above a rose. That's really pretty too, and I've used shimmer colours here. But I think this larger painting gives you a much better idea. This is painted with several shades of blue forming a diagonal line around these beautiful white flowers. In the white flowers, I've actually got some shimmer shades. I've got iridescent ruby here that gives a beautiful subtle effect. And excitingly, if you come down to this direction, there's a very subtle effect of iridescent electric blue. This colour has to be seen to be believed. It's absolutely magical. It's very vibrant. And at first you don't notice that shimmer. It's very subtle, but it lifts the whole painting in a way that ordinary watercolour shades can't quite reach. So let's have a look at the products themselves. So I'm introducing my Daniel Smith shimmer sets and they are absolutely fantastic. I will point out it was very hard choosing just six colours because if you look at the Daniel Smith range of shimmer colours, they are wonderful. You have a mix of iridescence and you have a mix of pearlescence and they can all be used on their own or mixed with other shades from the Daniel Smith range. I've chosen these six because these are colours that I use all the time, but I'm constantly experimenting. I want to talk you through the range and show you how they work. We have iridescent ruby, this is wonderful for adding subtle shades to white subjects, white dogs, white horses, white flowers, or any subject for that matter. Iridescent electric blue, I cannot live without this colour. It adds so much punch to all of my work. Even in unexpected places like buildings of Venice, etc., it really does pack a punch. Iridescent Aztec gold, who doesn't like gold? This is a beautiful shade. Iridescent topaz is a little bit different, but I'll show you why I love it. I add it on top of foliage. It acts as though there's dew or there's water, morning mist just hitting my flowers. It, it's actually really nice. Pearlescent white, very useful because you can add that to any shade whatsoever or use it as a glaze on its own. This one is actually a very valuable product. And iridescent copper. I love orange and ginger shades, so this is perfect for me. I add it to all my golds, uh, quinacridone gold, Aussie red gold. It, it's just super, so you can add that on its own or add it to another shade. Now I'm going to squeeze the product out of the tube and show you what they look like. I like getting an old scrap of paper for this, and I do this with all my shades. We start with iridescent ruby. I would like a necklace made with all these colours. I think that would be fantastic. So that's that one. 
iridescent electric blue. Everybody falls in love with this one. I'll just leave the top off there a minute. Iridescent Aztec gold, beautiful name. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? You can already see how you could use that. That's a fabulous colour. And you might think you'd be painting a normal subject like a horse, for example. You could add this on top of the horse for the sheen. Iridescent topaz. I love the name of this one. Whoops. I have to explain, we're actually filming on one of the hottest days ever, unusually, in the UK. Usually we have rain and cool weather. But these tubes have been in the heat. So that's why they're eager to jump out. Pearlescent white. I get through these tubes very quickly, actually. The pearlescent white can be added to all of these other shades. And then you get even more shimmer. Um, I like to use these colours in a subtle way. I don't want to overdo it. But at the same time, I want them to be seen. You can use them as much as you like. I think when we get something new, though, there's, there's that temptation to go nuts with them. A nice, subtle use is much better. You say more, or as the saying goes, less is more. And I love the iridescent copper. Now, if I'm actually looking at these colours, I instantly, my brain is choosing my favourites. The electric blue, gorgeous. And I love the Aztec gold, that's fantastic. And I love the copper, too. That sits on top of brown shades beautifully. This I can use with anything. This is the colour that surprised me quite a lot when I first started putting this set together because I can use that in so many ways, as I said earlier, on foliage. But it mixes well with other colours. So now I've got a dot of each of the colours, I want to see how they move. And some of them are not going to move as quickly as usual watercolour shades. This is something you get used to. It's purely the makeup of the product. I wet my brush. I'm going to put a little track of water on each. I'm not expecting to see much from the white one on white paper. That's better if you've got a darker background. Let's start from this side, bringing that lovely gold in. Actually, for a shimmer shade, it moves really well. But you only see the sparkle when it's dry. You won't see it so much when it's wet. I'll leave the white for a minute. This one might be a little bit harder to move. I know this because I've used it quite a lot. I tend to pick up quite a bit of product and move it to get that going. But I'll show you how to get that going on a, on a subject rather than just here. So we'll leave that for a second. Coming to my favorite. I love that noise for the water swirling. There we go. So the gold. Again, it's a little bit slow to move, but once you get it going, it's actually really nice. I'm leaving my favourite to last. It's like having a chocolate box. My favourite's the nutty one. I always leave that to last. The electric blue I adore. The ruby as well. This is a little bit slower to move. But again, once you get it going, you can get the colours running down. Now, as I said, you don't see the shimmer until they're dry. We just keep that moving. Let's see what happens with this blue. I can't wait to combine these two. This is already sparkling in a really pretty way. You see, they're nothing to be frightened of. They're not like a highly um, glitzy product. They are subtle, so you can use them with your watercolours. That is the whole point. And then we've got this that is electric. Oh, I love this. Imagine kingfishers in that colour. Oh. And if you put this with a yellow, oh, it's just divine. Gorgeous product. I want to paint now. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to tell you all about these lovely sh uh, shimmer shades, but every time I use them, I just want to stop and I want to go and paint with them. They're just so beautiful. And this you won't see very much because it's white on top of white paper. But I can take some of that and I can drop it into the blue, the gold. Whoops, I had some blue on my brush there. That was a bit silly. I can pop it into the green. I can pop it into the ruby and just let those shimmer. We'll just get rid of that. I shouldn't have done that one. Look what's happening here. And these effects get heightened when they're under glass. So I'm just going to move that to one side a minute. We'll let those dry. Here is another way of using these shimmer sets. You can take each individual colour and you can mix them with other shades on the Daniel Smith range. For this experiment, I've taken the iridescent topaz. OK, I've fallen in love with this colour. 
you can see it's a really subtle green and it's got hints of gold in it. Now I love Daniel Smith undersea green and I love Daniel Smith cascade green but so do many other people so they might be using them too and I've discovered a sneaky little way to make these colours look a little bit different. So all I do, I've got colour on the paper, this is the undersea green, there we go, let's take a little bit like this and I take a little bit of the topaz and I drop it in and I just let that colour mix into the green. I don't try to touch it, I just let it swirl in on its own and as it dries it gives me a completely different effect. If you let watercolour work on its own it's magical but we often as artists try to push it around too much. Actually that will dry far better without me playing with it all the time. So a little bit of cascade green here. Cascade green is a beautiful green but it actually does come out quite turquoisey when it dries and pigments can separate. You can get a really strong blue which is beautiful. I'll take the turquoise, sorry, the topaz again and drop that in there and just let it do its own thing. In a big wash, this is quite exciting. But you might think that the, uh, the topaz is a greeny shade anyway. What about trying it with something a little bit more unusual? So I took Aussie Red Gold, again from the Daniel Smith range. Which, oh, I love this colour. Look how vibrant that is. It's just, this is a feel-good colour. If you're not feeling very happy or not very well, get a tube of Aussie Red Gold. You'll feel brilliant in seconds when you use it. I'll take a little bit of my topaz and just literally drop it in. And it's like an electric light bulb. It goes in and it just lifts that colour. It's fantastic. So you see, when you're using them on their own, you might look at them here and think, well, how would I use those colours? The excitement comes from experimenting because you become unique as an artist. You find ways of using them that nobody else can or has discovered. So this is me playing with these colours and I'm getting really excited about my effects when I come to do my serious artwork. I will now be painting, creating unique work. Everyone's going to be looking at my finishing results and thinking, how on earth did she do that? So if you don't tell anyone and keep it a secret, the secret is my Daniel Smith shimmer sets. They're absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm.